ladies and gentlemen on the line i have nino america what up man what up dusty god bless you and everybody listening right now appreciate you man appreciate you glad to have you back on man there's so much to talk about dude let's uh let's jump right into it man Kamala has uh, her campaign has raised over a billion dollars. Yes, a billion with the B, everybody out mm. there. Um, yeah, she is still losing in most major polls to Donald Trump. Saturday Night Live even made a skit about her. And, you know, they never make fun of Democrats this close to the election. But let me play this piece right here and then we're going to talk more about it. And it's working. My campaign has raised a billion dollars. Oh, my Lord. How are you not winning by a landslide? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a question I scream into my pillow every morning. <laughs> okay. So all these layups that Kamala's getting, all these softball interviews, all this money she's raised, and she's still, let's say, neck and neck, if not neck and neck, losing in major polls to Donald Trump. Why do you think that is, my man? Uh, I think people have realized, you know, who she is. Um, my wife said it very clearly. I agree with her. She thinks that uh, Hillary was probably more popular uh, than Kamala. Mm. So I guess she's plateaued and uh, I don't think, I don't think she's going to win, but uh, you know, us being on YouTube, I'll just say this, we know how they play and uh, we should, we should be alarmed and we shouldn't be just coasting into the uh, polls we, uh, or, or trusting any of these polls. We shouldn't be coasting at this point. Should I say we should go out there and vote because uh, we know how the Democrats uh, maneuver, especially with, with situations like this. I saw a poll uh, that was, exactly eight years ago when it had Hillary 91% winning and, you know, Trump down there at the bottom. And that was again, eight years ago. So, uh, we can't really trust these polls. Uh, we can't be, uh, you know, misled by them, but i tell you what, I think the general public has really gotten a good, uh, whiff of Kamala and her lies and her lack of, of plan. You know, she doesn't have any plan or policy whatsoever that makes us, you know, consider her in my opinion a good candidate so i think you know it's kind of uh she could done plateau the people kind of realize what and who she is mm, yeah and you know when we spoke last time i think i mentioned that i believe that she was going to win now i'm completely opposite mm. i completely believe there's no way that she can win other than some underhanded stuff happening yeah um it's like kind of what i said last time i i, I always uh, it's like my wife said, if everything was legit, Trump would win. You know, um, at this point, uh, I hope he does win. Uh, there's a lot on the line right now. Uh, I'm glad that people are waking up to this. Uh, people always say the biggest election of our lifetimes. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to say this is the biggest one, but I guess of my lifetime, I guess so. Um, because the future, of this pres uh, the future of this nation relies on these two candidates right here. Like, wh what do you want more of? More of the Kamala Democrat, uh, you know, direction or do you want back the uh, you know the Trump the the, the Trumpism the, the Trump economy and, and the Trump uh, border security you know which one do you want so I would advise anybody listening right now thanks Dusty for doing this video uh, go out there and vote and vote your conscience vote your godly moral values and I would hope you vote for Trump uh, in an upcoming election. Yeah, you know uh, we I live in a border state. I live in Los Angeles, just hundred and so miles from the border. Uh, Texas is definitely a border state. You know. They're running with this narrative now, which just makes me laugh every time I hear them blatantly lie to us on TV. But Biden just said something the other day where more uh, more people, uh, more migrants came in under Trump than, than have came in under under Biden's administration. And it's ama it amazes wow. me how they will blatantly lie to us. Do you think people actually believe that? Uh, it just depends on what on what side of the aisle you sway on, to be honest, because uh it's very apparent, man. I live in, like I said, a border state, and uh, we know, you know, everybody knows. In the oil field, we know what the Democrats stand for. We know what, what Trump stands for, and as simple as this, Trump is for, you know, tough border security. Uh, he is for the border wall, and uh, for them to sit there and blatantly lie about these, you know, these facts, it's very alarming. But anybody can tell you, and I don't think their message has really resonated with people about Kamala being tough on the border. I mean, we all know the Democrats, uh, you know, I have to be careful my words here. We know that there are there are situations where there's a bunch of illegals flooding different counties and different cities, and we wonder if that's basically a plan or a plot in order to you know do something down the line as far as uh you know getting who they want elected. And I'll leave it at that. But um you know they lie about this kind of stuff. They do it blatantly right in your face. And I think the average everyday American citizen is not dumb. You know Trump is for border security, and the Democrats want to let everybody and their mama into the greatest the greatest country in history, and we ain't having it. 
You know, one thing that bothered me that happened this uh, past week or so was, especially, you know, me as being a person of color, was um, Barack Obama. He uh, made a statement to a bunch of black men. And in so many words, he lectured black men on why there is not as much excitement for Kamala Harris as there was for him. I'm going to play this clip here and then we're going to talk more about it. Coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. I've got a problem with that because, because part of it makes me think, and I'm speaking to men directly now, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. Mm -hmm. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for that. That's not acceptable. That's not, it, this shouldn't even be a question. And you're you know, I expect some, something like that from an Al Sharpton piece of trash like Jesse yeah. Jackson. But from Barack Obama, I, I did not expect that. When you heard Barack Obama lecture black men on why they're not voting for Kamala and why there's not as much excitement, what were your thoughts? I guess he doesn't uh, think the average black uh, American citizen can think for themselves. You know, it's blatantly disrespectful to, you know, individuals that have free thought. And um, running running on a candidate due, due to the race, I mean, that's really uh, ignorant in my opinion. I wouldn't care if somebody was Hispanic, Mexican, brown eye, brown eyes, and, mm -hmm. and brown skin like me. You know, I, I don't care about none of that. I probably, to be honest, I probably trust him a little bit less, to be completely honest. But um, I'm not going to sit there and vote for any candidate due to their, their their race or their skin color. And to me, the Democrats play this this crap all the time. Identity politics. They want you to get on board. If not, you are, uh, you know, Uncle Tom and all these other names they give people. But again, I, when I hear Obama say that, I just feel like he's being very smug. And, you know, like most Democrats, you know, it's like same thing with me being a Trump supporter. They think I can't uh, think for myself. They think I, I can't have free thought. And they want to actually dictate on how I should think and, and even worse on who I should vote for. Right. Due to political parties or standings or even skin color and racial issues, you know, they get upset when they find out I'm a Trumper. They think that just because I got brown skin that I should be voting Democrat like them, you know, till I die from, from the womb to the tomb. But, you know, people have woken up to this crap. And again, Obama saying that to these people, I find it highly disrespectful. I know a lot of black gentlemen, upstanding citizens, you know, in the community that are Trumpers, conservatives, Christians, uh, and people that, that stand up and, and uh, you know, they speak out, people like you, Dusty. And I appreciate those with, uh, you know, that are critical thinkers and, and aren't, aren't just swayed by these people like Obama. And they want to have you uh, push into this uh, identity politics bull crap, you know, trying to vote, vote on somebody based to not just race and skin color, but even tradition, just because your parents or whatever, you know, it's good to honor your mother and father. But, man, I'm not going to vote for the same party that's uh, a way different party than it was, you know, 20, 30 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago. Yeah. So when Obama, with Obama saying that, I find it highly disrespectful. He honestly, I think that they think, you know, people uh, of, you know, brown and black skin color and ethnicity, whatever, they think that we are not smart enough to make these, these decisions on our own. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I a white liberal that I'm associated with, I'm not going to say friends, but associated with, told one of mm. my other associates that I'm not a real black guy because I'm not voting for Kamala Harris. This is a white person. When I hear stuff like that, I, I truly believe those are the type of people that say the N-word, you know, in their home when no one's, yeah. no one's around, you know what I mean? But when you hear someone say that you're not a real black or you're not a real uh, Hispanic or Latino or whatever the case is, you're not a real white person if you don't vote for Trump, you know, what, what, um, what would you say to somebody like that? Uh, they're just dumbasses, and uh, you know I disregard them. You know I've heard I've heard these insults since since the day I put a Trump hat on, right? And it's usually the white liberals that are the most offended by me, you know, breaking out of this, you know, political matrix that we're in, right? I guess you know they're good with this stuff. They know how to brainwash to think that Democrats are for the poor, Republicans are for the rich. But man, I want to be rich. I want to make money. Yeah. I want to succeed in America. You know, what's wrong with, with working hard for what you got, you know? Um, so, again, when they tell me these things, Dusty, uh, everybody listening, 
uh, I just brush it off, you know, like a duck in the water, brushing the water off my back. It's hard at times, but I've gotten so used to it. You know, I've gotten so used to these slurs and these uh, insults that they get because I'm voting a different way than them. They, you know, it doesn't really matter too much to me uh, nowadays. Now, back in the day, I would probably, you know, go back back and forth with them on Facebook or, or getting put in Instagram jail for, you know, uh, saying certain, something off the cuff. But nowadays, this uh, political rhetoric and these insults by usually the, the, the wicked left, the, the, the far lefters, even whatever they are, right? Uh, it's quite common uh, for them to tell us this in order to, you know, disparage us, to discourage us from using our own brains to be critical thinkers and picking who we want to be the best candidate based on policies, not just uh, identity politics. You know, it's interesting to me that the left paints the right as this violent a whole group that is so mean and just hates this and hates women, hates whatever the case is. Dude, I swear, since what they tried to assassinate Trump a few months ago, I've heard at least five to 10 Democrats tell me personally, damn, too bad he missed. Yeah, Dusty, I was in the mall too with my family. I have actually have a clip, part would go viral, but uh, I don't know if I want to really, really release it, but a white gentleman. A liberal said basically the same thing when we're eating lunch with my wife and my kids. And, um, you know, they say this about Trump. I've heard many people say it right now. They're sending, sending paperwork in the mail, telling people to vote for uh, Kamala, that if you vote for Trump, he's a R word. He's all these words, like a very aggressive letters that American citizens are actually receiving in the mail. So, you know, they, they're really the party that I think is, is pretty violent. They get triggered by a MAGA hat. And um, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't wish nothing, no harm upon Kamala or even Biden. You know what I'm saying? I'm never going to sit there and say, I hope someone takes him out, whatever, you know, the vengeance is not mine, you know? So, um, I think whenever uh, we see a lot of these leftists with, uh, with them being triggered so bad by MAGA hats, uh, patriots, people that love this country and love Trump, that they actually sit there and they want to uh, promote violence when they usually promote that they are the party of, uh, you know, being tolerant when we see very clearly they are everything but tolerant. So I guess they're just, or I don't guess, I know they are basic hypocrites. And for them to say that, you know, that guy missed and he's a bad shot. I mean, you see it every day from people you run across, liberals, uh, to people, you know, on TV, Twitter, of all places. So uh, this hate for Trump, you know, it really shows you that uh, he's doing something right. If he's hated that bad of getting threats of, of violence and, and them kind of a remarks, it shows you that he's on the right path. Kamala Harris is losing the black and Latino vote. Let's start with the Latinos, um, Hispanics. According to polls, Kamala has the worst advantage for a Democrat with Latino voters in four election cycles. Right now, she's winning uh, Latinos 54 percent to Trump's 40 percent with uh, six percent undecided. So 50 to 40, 54 to 40 is a 14 point advantage. Biden at the same time back in 2020 had a 36 point advantage to Kamala's now wow. 14 point advantage. Obama just before Biden had a 39 point advantage to Kamala's current 14 percent advantage with Hispanic voters. Why do you think if Trump is this big R word and he wants to send everybody back and he hates Mexicans and he hates El Salvador? Why do you think Latinos are not feeling Kamala? Because we are fed up with the Democratic Party. We are fed up with their three and a half years of uh, running and ruining this nation. And we're, we're, we're just we're frankly just fed up. Dusty, uh, everybody listening, man, great stats. I'm, I'm glad you pulled that out. Dusty, uh, let me ask you. So you, I guess you really think that, uh, I mean, it's looking, I mean, I know it's looking bad for Kamala, but those numbers, I guess you're saying it's looking really bad, really right? Really bad, <laughs> really bad. Dude. Wow. Yeah, so uh, that's very interesting. I'm glad you pulled them out. But like I said, we're, we're tired of it. I mean, it's very simple, right? Under Trump, we were balling. Under Biden, we're falling. It's simple as that. My company was doing numbers, bro. Numbers in the West Texas oil fields. Uh, you know, when Trump was in there. Now we're barely getting by. Companies are going under. Uh, uh, companies are going bankrupt. You know, people are having a hard time putting food on the table. And you could sit there and call Trump every name in the book. I think most people understand that that's just a lot of uh, rhetoric. And most leftists are always going to call him that. But I think the basic, you know, American that wants to provide for his family, he's going to see, he or she's going to see past that. And they're going to see the grocery bill being $300 for a week's worth of groceries. They're going to see the gas bill rising. They're going to see their insurance. How about our insurance? Because of these illegals, right? Our insurance is basically doubled, right? Our insurance rates are up through the roof. 
The cost of living is crazy, and everybody feels it. We are in a recession. Uh, inflation's through the roof. So I think what it is is we actually see the results of the Democrats being in office, and people are like, "Damn, I would rather have that supposed R word tweeting mean tweets, right, and, and have my bank account looking good instead of the opposite." So I think that's what's happening right now. People have actually woken up to this, and they're not going to side with the Democrats regardless of what they say because the track record has proven that. It's no good for the economy or for uh, everyday citizens of America. It's crazy. I'm not faulting the migrants. I want to make this clear because if I lived in a crappy country and shit was horrible and I got word that America was giving away free money and free housing and free schooling and my kids can get free health care and all this, you dang right I'm coming. I'm not blaming the migrants. I'm blaming the policies that are in place mm. that allows so many of these people to come in unvetted. That's the thing. I'm unvetted, bro. Dusty, I'm going to tell you right now, I say it all the time, build a wall, deport them all, even Abuelita. They all got to go. If you're in my country illegally, you got to get out of your homes. Simple as that. People get offended when I say that. I don't give a flip because to be completely honest, bro, what, how does, how do you value, how do you value a nation if you can't even value the, the, the borders of that nation? You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, you talk about illegal immigration being a problem. I'm in West Texas. I got brown skin, purple lips. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, they, they think I came from the, across the border the way I look, but the way I operate and I was actually born here. I'm an American citizen. These, they are a problem and you don't fault them. And I don't fault them to a certain degree, but at the same time I do, because Trump was right. What he said, right. When he pointed that point out that they're sending their worst over here, the R words and the criminals from what I've seen, he was, com he was completely right with that statement. And from what I see in my city, there's a, was on the corner in places they've never been before in front of Target. I went out there and actually interviewed them. They come straight from Venezuela. They're here. We don't know. Like you said, they're unvetted. We don't know if they're uh, child predators. We don't know their criminal history. I called the Midland Police Department. They told me on the phone themselves they will not arrest them because they have not broken any laws. They broke the law of the land once they stepped their foot onto my country's soil. I called the Border Patrol out here in West Texas. They don't even call me back. So basically, we have to fend for ourselves as American citizens in this city. And there's about, I think, 40,000, if not more, in Midland, Odessa, Texas, where I'm at. So it's a huge problem. So that's another reason why people are fed up, especially people that are supposed minorities, because we ain't dumb. You know, we, we see who's committing crimes. We see that, that, that where they come from. We see what... We, we make, we judge, we, we judge correctly, should I say, and we're fed up with this crap because I know I am. And like I said, uh, I got brown skin, but at the same time, I was born here. And for them cutting it from the line, that's pretty damn sorry. It takes a lot of money, time, and effort to become an, uh, a naturalized citizen in the United States of America. And for these guys just to jump the border, come here, and I would even say some are placed here by certain organizations in the government, hello, but for them to do that mm. is actually a big disservice and disrespect to those that paid their way and waited to be United States citizens. Mm. Go ahead, my bad. Yeah, yeah, no, you're good. We're nah. passionate, bro. Bro, we're passionate about that, bro, in West Texas, bro. Bro, we used to have... The days are over, y'all, of Mexican families and men want to come and have, you know, make a good way. And for the, no, they're coming from Venezuela. They're coming from uh, all these uh, foreign, uh, you know, nations. We don't even know where they're coming from. Russia, China, we don't even know, y'all. That's the point. They're unvetted. And God only knows where they truly have come from. So them days of the, the Mexican man trying to come in for a better life, that's over, y'all. These people are a threat to the uh, society and to the safety of American citizens. And I think the voters have seen past this Democrat bullcrap. And that's why we're fed up with Kamala. We just can't wait till Trump gets back in there. My bad. Yeah, yeah. No, you're good, man. Talk as long as you want. Yeah, you know, yeah. what's scary is, you know, like you said, they're coming from everywhere, dog. They're not just coming from south of the border. They're coming from mm -hmm. places that are our sworn enemies. You know what I'm saying? And they, they know that if I go to Mexico, all I have to do is walk up the border. And now I'm in America. Dust, if, let me add. If yeah. you don't, I'm sorry to cut you Please. off. I, I, I wasn't right now. This is a train of thought. My buddies came over. I do a podcast uh, every one Monday. We, we re record it and drop it throughout the week. But his wife told my wife, and when, I never thought about this, but she said, think about it. She thinks there's an actual more sinister plan with these illegals flooding the southern border because she said, think about it. Your kids, my kids, we're not going to go door to door and take the weaponry away from the average everyday citizen. We're not going to turn on our kids are not going to turn on their own communities and families. But just imagine if they somehow get these illegals to enter the uh, military in some way or fashion, right? Some sort of fashion, they get them in there. You think they're going to have the same loyalty to this uh, country that our kids will have? No, they won't. So uh, call it conspiratorial, 
But when this lady told me that, I said, damn, that's not a bad mm. uh, idea or theory. If you think about it, that maybe one day they could be having these people from different countries come in here and use them against the American citizens. I'm not saying that's true, but I said, damn, if that were to happen, that would be a pretty good scenario uh, uh, for, for, for them on that wicked side. You know what I'm saying? I'm old enough to remember 9-11 very vividly. Um, I mean, I'm in my late 40s, so I was, what, I'm 20, in my 20s back when it happens. I remember seeing the towers get hit and all that. If And I remember the, the feeling of unity amongst America for a very mm. short period of time. If you would have told me on 9-12-2001 that we would have an open border just 20 years later, I would think you're crazy. Just that feeling that I remember having on 9 12 the day after and now we now it's just like no one remembers that dude wow but just imagine though this too you know i i don't know the origins or the history with 9 11 like as far as the conspiracies go there's so many conspiracies but it kind of sucks too because look what happened with 9 11 and then what did they start doing to the average everyday citizen now when you get on the plane tsa is basically just going through you with the fine uh tooth comb you know what i mean like there's there's uh negatives about it as well but as far as the being patriotic and, and, and not imagining, you know, open borders, man, I, you know, what a feeling that would have been, you know, what, 20 years ago, right, to have that feeling, you know, God forbid, now, now look how it is now. You know, you can just walk across the southern border. And not just that, Dusty, everybody listening, I have it documented through ex-Border uh, Patrol agents, Frank Lopez, he's one of them, check him out on social media. They have actual charities and churches that, that help facilitate aid oh, and yeah. the these of course that's the, that's the bad part they ship them in and they put them to a place where they can get them and they can throw them across to any city in the united states so this is not a conspiracy this has actually been documented and we got footage but the thing is i mean does, does the, do the democrats care or are they part of this i don't know but again vote for trump and, and i guarantee you we're going to be in a better position i'm not going to say he's going to get rid of illegal immigration all the way because i think it's basically a political ploy between both parties right if they wanted to stop it they probably could but they use it you know to divide us to a certain degree but i just know that with Trump, the, the 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 immigration situation wasn't as bad as it as it is now. Even if you speak to some of these people, they know they know under Trump it's tougher, and under uh, Biden and Kamala, it's going to be way easier. They know this. They ain't they ain't that dumb. But uh, you know, it is what it is at this point, y'all. Yeah, you know, JD Vance did an interview not too long ago, maybe a week, maybe not even two weeks ago, and uh, he made a statement about. Venezuelan gangs taking over apartment complexes in certain cities and the person who was interviewing him did a did a fact check and I put fact check in quotes but they said uh, and these were the words that this person said that was interviewing JD Vance oh it's only a few apartment complexes that they're taking over and then JD Vance as quick as day quick just said wait a few that, that's that's a few too many it shouldn't even be one could you imagine dog just imagine this for a second Imagine if someone came out and said, George Floyd, that's just one black guy. Come on, just one black guy. You know what I mean? Now we're over here making it, the, the, the left is making it okay that Venezuelan gangs only, to, only took over a few apartment complexes. I couldn't believe when I heard that, man. Man, great point, bro. Um, just ask the, the one guy that came out. I posted it. You know, I verified it was true. Uh, he stood up to these guys. They wanted like half of the profits and they beat him to a bloody pulp, man. I got it on my Facebook page. It's been made all the rounds. Uh, he basically got threatened by these guys. And you're right. This one is one too many, bro. Straight up. And uh, I don't know if it was J.D. Vance who had said this, but basically said somebody had told a reporter with the same similar question. It may have been him. I forgot. But uh, the person told him, um, don't you see this this way of thinking that you have? that you sit here and, and kind of gloss over the fact they're even here doing this. Like, again, one is one too many. So, uh, again, J.D. Vance, uh, I salute him. I don't know about you, Dusty. At first, I didn't really like him or trust the guy. But after seeing him speak. I love and him the way, now, you know, he, he, I can yeah, see him as a future president. And all that, man, come on. And uh, he was a strategic pick, you know, from what they're saying. He would get the certain kind of vote in that, in that sector where he came from. And uh, I like J.D. Vance at first. Of course, I didn't trust him. I'm going to be completely honest. But the way he's maneuvered in this political uh, realm has been a very, a very good, very wise. And uh, I've heard him in a, on a couple of podcasts. He's very sharp, uh, but he's right. You know, one is one too many, y'all. You know, what if that was your family in that apartment complex? Look, think about it, y'all. These gangs, they don't just go terrorize somebody in the north side in a nice high rise. They're, they're actually terrorizing the people in the community, right? They're, they're amongst the minorities, uh, if, if I uh, may say. They're terrorizing people in the hood 
in these apartment complexes that are, uh, you know, on, on a lower income level. Let's be honest, y'all. And they're there. And where's the help for them? You know, so so shame on anybody thinking that, uh, you know, this is just another, another conspiracy or it's not that many. One is one too many. Simple and plain. Yeah. You know, let's move on to Kamala and the black vote. Um, after years of saying she won't do anything specific for black people. This past week, uh, just what, two weeks up to the election, she just released an economic plan for black America. Pretty sure you've seen it. Maybe not. But if yeah. anyone out there, OK, um, it was about five or six bullet points. And um, I guess she's feeling the pressure of black men not messing with her. And in this plan, this is the part that really just insulted the academy and I was like, I would never vote for someone who even has this train of thought. But the last bullet point, and anybody could pull this up right now, go to Google, pull it up. Um, she has a part of her plan is she says she is going to legalize marijuana. Man, that's crazy. But I got another question. I saw some things that were kind of questionable myself. Uh, can I identify as black? Because she actually has a plan, you know, uh, targeting, you know, black American citizens. Right. And I believe that's, that's racist. You know, what if they would have done this? And said it was for white people. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's horrible. You know, they're getting some kind of business grants and loans. I forgot exactly the bullet points. But when I saw that, I said, damn, you know, uh, how horrible, right? How horrible for her to, to, to play this race uh, identity politics at this uh, late in the game. But like you said, she must be that unpopular with, with uh, brothers and sisters out there that she, you know, had to play the, pull this maneuver out. But again, the marijuana, right? Let's be honest, though. I think, uh, wasn't Trump kind of already, uh, you know, kind of toying with that at some point. I don't oh, know. She's but, just taking everything uh, out of his playbook. Yeah. He, he definitely that's what I'm saying. That. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And to be honest, the, uh, the situation with the marijuana, uh, I'm a Christian. I believe in being, uh, sober minded at all times. But, uh, I think that between pharmaceuticals, you know, there's a, a clear, easier winner, right? So, uh, as far as legalizing it, Hey, if they get power to the state to do so, that's, that's a whole nother, uh, talk here. But again, her just basically saying that, I mean, she might as well come out with the ad saying you get a free 40 and, and, and a joint, right? For the blacks. You know what I'm saying? Like, like what, yeah. what a slap in the face to the people. It's, it's like, if she said, you know, something with, with the Mexicans, you know, like how, how disgraceful, but my, my question is, Dusty, how does she get away with this stuff without people calling her out? I'm thankfully you do, but, I think it's pretty sorry what she did, you know, and um, that's I guess that's her plan for for black America, America to get the black vote. <laughs> Go ahead. You know, I want to play an old clip for you. It's a real old clip from back when Hillary was running, running, excuse me. But it's a clip of Donald Trump and it's about a minute and a half. So get comfortable, everybody out there. But it's a clip of Donald Trump asking black people, what the hell do you have to lose by voting for me? I'm going to play this clip and we're going to talk about it after. No group in America has been more harmed by Hillary Clinton's policies than African Americans. No group, no group. If Hillary Clinton's goal was to inflict pain on the African American community, she could not have done a better job. It's a disgrace. Tonight, I'm asking for the vote of every single African-American citizen in this country who wants to see a better future. Look how much African-American communities have suffered under democratic control. To those I say the following, what do you have to lose by trying something new like Trump. What do you have to lose? I say it again. What do you have to lose? Look, what do you have to lose? You're living in poverty. Your schools are no good. You have no jobs. 58% of your youth is unemployed. What the hell do you have to lose? What do you think when you hear that? Damn, I love that guy. <laughs> uh, just dropping truth bombs. And to be honest, I would say this, what do you have to gain? You know, probably everything. Um, I would even say this, Dusty, that can probably apply to a lot of Americans today in this day and age. You no, know, no, regardless of skin color, you know, we're going through it right now. Uh, Trump, he's in New York. He says things off the cuff, you know, he, he lets it rip. The one thing I like about Trump though, is you can, uh, you can judge a book. I um, mean, you, you can listen to what he says and, and, uh, and basically 
I feel like he's not someone up there like a regular politician just just lying to you. So with him saying these bold statements, you know, I agree with him. What do you have to lose? But I would even add, what do you have to gain? You know, especially with the way the Democrats, you know, what they stand for and what they represent. Let's be honest. I think the Democrats have, have abandoned the, the minorities, the blacks and all that, that vote long ago. You know, they're pushing for more of these, I would say, uh, illegals. But uh, from from what he said, you know, I, I salute uh, the boss Don right there for you know keeping it real and uh, basically giving them an option. And again, I would just say, what do you have, not what do you have to lose, what do you have to gain? I would say everything. And you said it best earlier, man. This is not the Democratic Party that I grew up with. You know, I think mm-hmm. I mentioned before. You know, I was I was I voted Democrat up until my my mid thirties. You know, but then I started looking at my tax statements and looking at things around me. And yeah. you know, I owned a home. I, be, I bought my first home, and I'm just like, okay, now it may be time, you know, to shift. How do you, how or when or why do you think the Democrats are not the same than they were? Let's go back in 1994. I don't know. I guess they got. I don't even want to say infiltrated, taken over. They got these. Uh, far left ideologies again uh, in 94 I was barely even uh, you know a, a kid myself you know so I wasn't really heavily heavily into politics but I'll, I'll say this it seems like everybody wakes up like that Dusty you know even kids you know they, they turn a certain age and they start paying these you know taxes and their paychecks and they buy homes and they start realizing you know that this is not the right policies that they want to push for you know the Democrat policies now as far as uh, I'm gonna be honest both sides you know, I'm not really even a Republican. I'm just a uh, Christian conservative, a Trumper. But, um, you know, the Democrats, uh, they went far left, man. They went all the way to the left. And uh, I don't know if there's any turning back for them whatsoever, because uh, I remember, you know, people saying that about the Democrats of old, that they were more, you know, towards the middle. And, uh, you know, they were for the average uh, working citizen. You know, I guess the poor, too, if you want to lump it in there. But as far as them really, you know, taking this big shift, I would say, like some people have said before, it started with Obama. You know, Obama really started pushing that, uh, you know, LDHD TV uh, push on, on, the, on the people, <laughs> especially on, on the blacks, I believe. So I, I believe Obama had a lot to do with them, you know, going far off more into the left uh, zone they're at now. And man, look at them now. You know, it's a, it's a party that is unrecognizable from, like you said, 20 years ago. It's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah, so unrecognizable, dude. You know, they, they kicked a Biden out. You know, they need to keep this guy off TV. Like, it's just embarrassing when, when he talks. I mean, it's just really sad, actually. It's not embarrassing. It's more sad, in my opinion. But do you think uh, there's some tension behind the scenes? Do you think the Biden camp uh, doesn't like Kamala's camp and Kamala's camp doesn't like the Biden camp? Hell yeah, because uh, you saw you saw Biden. I posted it. He put the MAGA hat on. You know, I mean, come on. Oh, he, yeah. He, well, he put the Trump hat on. Uh, he hasn't really been politicking for Kamala. And I ain't gonna lie, I saw this theory float around this post but i don't know if it's actually true but they're they're saying like they won't it was kind of a joke but you know there's a lot of truth in every joke but they're saying that the democrats certain ones are trying to you know uh hit up the supreme court or, or file paperwork in order to get you know biden back in there right because they basically installed kamala talk about uh you know a situation there uh kamala was not uh the popular vote she did not really get that spot other than you know joe, joe biden i guess stepping down so uh I think Biden is, is pretty upset, and even his wife. You can kind of tell by, you know, the reports that come out, their mannerisms, you know what I'm saying? I don't think that he's happy that they push him out of the way. And to be honest, I, I think he probably, if not be better than Kamala, they probably be neck and neck as far as, you know, you know popularity because I think Kamala is an actual uh, train wreck herself. You know, so is Biden. They both they both suck. Let's be honest. Uh, they got some horrible candidates. Hopefully the, the citizens will see through it. But, again, to answer your question, uh, I think that, uh, you know, Kamala and Joe Biden, their, their camps, they, uh, they don't like each other. You can kind of tell just by watching certain things and seeing how, you know, Biden operates and maneuvers out there and uh, the lack of him really politicking for Kamala. And let's be honest, uh, it's kind of messed up what they did to him. They pushed him out the way. They used him. You know, old Dementia Joe got used and abused and then they installed uh, Kamala in there. So, you know, if it was me, I'd be pissed myself, you know. It's it's almost like they're working against her when they should be working for her. But did you see the yep. clip? with bill clinton they asked bill clinton about i think it was lakey ryland uh, i hope i'm pronouncing her name right i forgive me if i'm not world but uh he, he they they asked bill clinton you know what he thought about that and there's a story about you know uh, someone from another country coming and committing this heinous act on on this person and bill clinton said this would have never happened if the borders were secure <laughs> i was Amen. like yeah no R. shit R. yeah an rrp to her you know and that's another one dusty uh how many deaths do we have to uh you know experience before we close that border you know one is one too many you know uh 
God bless her, that lady's uh, family and, and, every, and the whole situation. But it's true. You know, the borders are open and this is, this is the effects of open borders, y'all. Anybody out there that wants to have an open border, you believe in that tonight, you need to go home, open up all your doors, uh, make sure they're not locked, all your windows and let any and every man or woman or child come into your home, stay for free, uh, eat all your food in your refrigerator and uh, pay for all their, uh, you know, healthcare expenses. And don't you say a damn word. Mm -hmm. If that's, if you believe in open borders, you need to open up your house to just any person uh, imaginable. You know, how, how ridiculous does that sound? But yet that's what people, they want open borders. That's what they, that's what they push, you know? And, uh, if anybody is to blame, I would say, uh, you know, the Democrats are more to blame for these uh, border policies. But at the same time, like I said, uh, Republicans, too, especially those that, you know, work against Trump, they have some blame, I, I would imagine, in a lot of this, uh, you know, horrendous uh, situations in America because of their failed policies, them playing politics and whatnot. But for the most part, we do know that uh, Trump was strong on the border. The Democrats are not. So, yeah, I think it was a, a very telling statement <laughs> that old Bill said, you know, I guess a, a broken clock tells the truth every now and then, right? Every, <laughs> right every now and then. So I guess Bill Clinton said that statement, and that went viral. And I bet you Kamala and them did not appreciate him opening his mouth. Facts, right? They're like, "Shut up, dude!" Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's real talk, man. You know, you shared your thoughts on our last show of having a woman president. You know, people are trying to say that you know America as a whole isn't ready for a woman president. In my opinion, it has almost zero. A very little to do with her being a woman. I'd personally vote, vote for Tulsi Gabbard in a heartbeat. I've, I've always mm -hmm. dug her. I always liked her. You know what I mean? And and once, like you said earlier, you're not necessarily a Republican. You're more, you know, um, conservative. I'm the same way. I'm not tied to the Republican Party. If they would have presented Tulsi Gabbard to me and, and she was running a great campaign, I probably would have voted for Tulsi Gabbard. I just want America to know it has very little to do with the fact that Kamala is a woman. It's the fact that she is just trash, dog. Her policies are trash, if she even has any. And she's just she's just trash, man. I don't know. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, uh, to be honest, I saw, I saw Tosi throwing out MAGA hats. I was like, damn, they're like, man, she's pretty cool. Oh, wow. In my That's opinion, it. you know? Okay. Yeah, I saw I saw a clip of her doing that. But anyways, I'll be honest, y'all. Uh, I think America is ready for a woman president. I mean, they're probably even ready for an LDHD TV president. Well, was that Obama? I don't know. But the point is, um, <laughs> I, I think the people, you know, they're going to elect the leaders they want, you know? And, I, you know, my statements about a woman, uh, they still ring true. I hold fast to my thoughts and my uh, opinion and my stance. But I'm going to be honest, y'all, um, you're right, Dusty. This is not about uh, her being a woman. It's about her being a wicked woman. <laughs> like I said, um, I'm going to be honest. If it was Candace Owens up there, shoot. Oh, heartbeat. Her. Get out of here. Straight up. Heartbeat. You know what I'm saying? Tulsi Gabbard, you know, uh, yeah, let's go. You know, uh, people like that with a with uh, good mindset, uh, I'm totally for. But again, my, my stance does still ring true. But uh, America would select a woman. I just don't believe this is the right woman, uh, you know, to do it. Same thing like Hillary. It was the wrong person, the wrong woman at the wrong time. Um, this country, I think, will elect a woman sooner or later, and they will probably elect another uh, LDHD TV member when they get the chance as well. So I don't think that it's pretty, really that America's not ready for a woman. It's just common sense. They're not ready for this woman, and she has no policies. She's a horrendous uh, you know, candidate, in my opinion, and she just flat out sucks. Kamala sucks. Trump's better. And maybe if Biden's presidency didn't go as the way it went, as far as the economy and inflation and all this, you know, Bidenomics, maybe she would have had a better shot. But I think the people are not dumb. They see their paychecks going down, uh, uh, food and, and fuels going through the roof. So they want Trump back. And it's simple as that. But again, uh, an American president, uh, a woman president, uh, I think, you know, this probably right, right around the corner sooner or later. But again, Kamala is just not that one. She's horrible. And last question for you, my man, I, I really wanted to hit home, you know, I really wanted to target uh, the black folks and the Hispanic folks out there during this particular show, um, because let, let me ask you, what do you, what would you say to, to any person of color out there being black, Hispanic, whatever, out there who are afraid, uh, maybe feel like they're being bullied by family, friends, work colleagues to vote, you know, to, to not vote Democrat and actually try the Republicans, what would you say to anyone who's afraid to step out to the other side. What do you have to gain? And also, uh, remember when they call you uncle Tom, uncle Tom was a hero. Y'all, um, exactly. look, everybody at the end of the day, this country is in dire straits. We have big problems from that border to the cost of living. And I'm going to be honest, y'all Trump, we all know this. He was only the big R word and the big bad guy. Once he ran for 
uh, office in this political spectrum, y'all. Trump cares about every American. Is he perfect? No, he's not. Huh. Does he got a couple felony charges? <laughs> Let's go. Yes, he does. So, uh, you know, I think that a Trump is just, uh, you know, he's a man's man. And he's a every man's man, uh, in other words, even though he's a billionaire. Because money doesn't uh, basically, um, how do I say this? Money, I wouldn't say define somebody, but I think money kind of exposes what kind of person uh, someone really is, right? You could be poor. You could be a poor, poor person or a poor, rich person, right? It depends on what's in, you know in your heart. And I think Trump, from him helping victims, I mean, paying certain things. And I mean, he's done so much throughout his history. I think it shows that he's not really the big R word that they claim he is. So anybody out there listening with, you know, brown skin of any sorts, any minorities listening, again, what do you have to gain? Uh, if you've liked how the Democrats have run for the last three and a half years, really the whole last 20, right? Trump was barely in there, right. you know, four years. But if you like how that's been going, go ahead. By all means, vote for the Democrats. But if you want something sustainable, if you want to make a paycheck and make sure you keep most of your money, and if you want your house to be safe for the most part at night with uh, without crime running through the, uh, going through the roof and illegal aliens, you know, on every corner in in even small towns, I would say vote for the man with the plan, and that's Donald J. Trump. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. You know, I lied. I have one more one more thing I wanted go to ahead. touch on with you because. You know, I grew up listening to Howard Stern. Um, he, dare I say, is one of the reasons why I'm sitting behind the microphone now. I loved Howard Stern back in the 90s up until the maybe early 2000s. Different Howard Stern now, but I get it. He's 75 years old, damn near, and he, he can't be throwing baloney at girls' booties all the time right at this age. But he had Kamala on, as you are aware. And the first thing that stood out to me, it was probably within the last two, it was within the first two minutes of the conversation they had. He said, and I quote, I... I'm voting for Kamala, but I would also vote for that wall over there instead of Donald Trump. What, when I hear things like that, I don't know. When you hear someone say something like that, that it's anybody but Trump, Trump, uh, you know, uh, Kamala or, or blue or nothing, blue till I die, you know, whoever, it doesn't matter who's on the other side. When you hear someone say they would, and, and Kamala, she didn't even realize she was being insulted. You know what I'm saying? That, to me, that's an insult. If I, if I meet a girl, I'll be like, damn, baby, you sexy as heck. I want to I wanna do you. I want to bang you. I'm, let's, let's go. You know, let's do but I'd also bang that wall over there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And then Kamala just cackles. You know what I'm saying? She just cackles cackles after Howard said that but when you hear someone say something like that they'd vote for a wall instead of Donald Trump what would you say they're too far gone Dusty yeah. people like that I mean there was a clip that I saw that I posted on my Instagram of an old uh, elderly man saying that he wishes that you know that they, they would take Trump out and that you know anything's better than than, than uh, Trump basically saying the same rhetoric and these people are just far, too far gone they're just uh their hatred for Trump has blindly enraged them to the point where they suffer from TDS uh, the ladies from the view are a great, uh, you know, uh, uh. a great point on that. And, uh, same thing with Howard Stern, you know, he, he's a shell of a man, Dusty. I used to listen to him too, but let's be honest. He was pretty degenerate back in the day uh, for free speech. Let's go. But, uh, he was a degenerate person in his time and, and look at him now. Just, uh, you know, he's, he's horrible in my opinion, you know, scared of the Rona masked up and all this weird stuff he does at the show, but that's his show. But again, uh, him stating that in dissing Kamala, I mean, damn, you would think he would say, man, Kamala, I'm going to vote for you. You're the best. But he just let her let it hang out right there like most of them do. Most of the people that are going to vote for Kamala is not because they like her. It's because they hate Trump. Yeah. The hatred for that man is so strong. They would rather, like he said, pick a wall <laughs> than pick uh, Trump. Right. So they're too far gone, y'all. Anybody listening right now, you need to go out there, vote. Make sure you're registered to vote. Go vote early. Vote in person. And remember, they're going to call you every name in the book. But what it matters in the end is what is, is your safety of you and your family and the economy and how much you bring home with that paycheck. So uh, I say all that to say this, y'all, just, uh, you know, vote with your, your morality, vote with your, uh, you know, with your wallet and your finances and your family, you know, in your mind. And, uh, yeah, Howard Stern saying that that's basically the uh, rhetoric and the, and the thought process of most Democrats in America. They have they suffer from TDS is a very strange ailment. They get very flustered and uh, very upset when they see anything to do with Trump. Any red MAGA hats, man, they throw a fit. So be careful with these people, y'all. They are unhinged, and you can't help them. <laughs> yeah, facts, dude. You know, America, man, that, that flew by. I really appreciate you coming on. Tell everybody where yes, they can sir. find you. You can find me on all platforms, y'all. Uh, Nino America, N at N-I-N-O-M-E-R-I-C-A. Just Google me, whatever. I'm on all platforms. Uh, 
Thank you for your time. Dusty, thank you and your audience. God bless everybody listening. And man, when you go vote, if you can, I ask you with all due respect, vote for Trump and vote for the brightest future of America. My God bless. dude, Nino America, man. I'll talk to you soon, all right? All right, brother. Peace, man. Later.